Hello, I'm going to introduce you now to the virtual part of our class, that is the 3D simulation space. And maybe you've seen things like this before, or maybe you've not seen things like this before. So I'm going to begin by introducing just the basics of what we've designed here. So I to begin with, I'm going to just say, good to see you. And I think you're going to need a little bit of patience to hang in there. Uh, you can see my screen has a few different parts. Now, one of those parts is I can change some of the attributes of my avatar and, so, and my screen, in fact, the interface. So right now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn off the name above my head just to make things a little bit clearer. Okay, and I can zoom in a little bit to give you a better uh, shot of me. I can uh, give you a few gestures there. So these are some of the gestures our students can use for their avatars. You can act like you're answering a phone call. You can nod yes, laugh, signal students to follow you. You can wink, have a seat, sit down that is. See that there? Let's get back up here, zoom in a little bit. Say no. Okay. Say yes. Clap hands. Cheer. Bow. Offer a shake hands. Raise the hand, which is very convenient because the hand stays up. It's not just a gesture that ends with a few seconds, as all the other gestures are. And wave. Okay, I think what I want to do is just kind of walk you through what we've done for the business negotiation class. And right now we're in a big empty space as you can see here. If you look all around here above me, you can see there's a big empty space. Now, the reason for this space is we found it necessary to test students very carefully on their audio capability. That is to say, it's one thing to show students the manual, it's another thing to ask them to actually read it or be sure they read it. In other words, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So the biggest challenge we've had in this class over the last five or six years of kind of implementing this, pioneering it, and slowly learning how to use it in class, the biggest problem has been on the student side, getting students to execute what the requirements are. So I think that uh, in another video we've gone over the in-class requirements and here I just want to show you some of the things we've done inside the virtual space to ease or alleviate or to encourage uh, the correct kind of behavior. So what we have here is a big empty space, nothing here at all. And this is not originally what we had designed. We actually had students come into the bus terminal. However, what we want to do is we want to have a buffer, a place where students can enter. This would be the entry point where I'm standing right now. So you need an entry point. And then from this point to the rest of the virtual space is a little bit of a distance. In this way, I and my TAs, if I can have a TA or two, can stop students before they reach a terminal area and check their audio. This is the biggest problem by far, is students' audio. Their audio is simply not working right, or the most important problem is they have an open speaker so that the audio of somebody's talking goes out of their speaker and then right into their microphone, causing feedback or echo. Very difficult to prevent, and yet, all students need to do is have a headphone and a, and a microphone, a headset, and everything is fine. But it's very difficult from the teacher's perspective to force students to do this. Sometimes they even have a headset, but then in Windows they select the onboard microphone, the notebook microphone, so, or the um, uh, notebook speakers. It's just really, really difficult problem. I find this to be the most challenging issue, and not just in a 3D simulation space, but also in video meetings, which I've done before with more than just two people, or two groups. So you can see what we've done here is we've created a gate way back there, and that 
gate back there is actually the portal going to the bus station. So rather than going directly to the bus station, we've added something. I'm going to back up while I'm talking. So what we've added is this portal. You can see walking this distance takes a bit of time. And so this acts as a kind of buffer between students first entering and then playing the rest of the, of the RPG or, or entering the rest of the class. Okay, so I've gone through the portal now. And now I am at the bus terminal. I'll change my angle here. You can see that we have the bus terminal. Now originally we also have multiple buses here going to different campuses. For example, we have a tourism campus and we have a negotiation campus and a couple others. But we found students going off in the wrong directions, getting lost, and very difficult for them to come back. So what we have is just one bus now. We've hidden the rest. You can also see I've erected this sign here. And this sign is asking students, please mute mic and use push to talk. So in Open Wonderland, you can mute your mic. If you can see my mouse here on the right side, I can mute the mic. And then I can actually have to hold down the button to talk. And if I let go of the button, when you let go of the button, there's no sound, even though you can talk. When you hold the button down, you can talk. I find this to be by far the best way for students to talk inside the virtual space because it prevents them from just leaving their microphone open and then you hear everything in the room, very distracting. And more importantly, our students who have very bad audio have not checked their audio or fixed their audio, getting a lot of feedback or static, and they just leave it open. So I'm always trying to encourage students to use the mute function and push the talk. Now I'm going to leave my mic wide open because I'm just one person all alone. And usually from the teacher's perspective, the teacher leaves their mic open because it's easier that way. There's so many things to be doing, so many things to pay attention to, so many details, that it's really helpful just to keep my mic open. But you have to be careful not to have a whole lot of background sound or be talking to somebody else because all the students, of course, will hear you. Okay, I'm using the chase camera right now. We have a few different camera angles. You can select those in the menu, which would be the view menu. You have a few different, or you can just press C for camera. And it cycles through the view. So this is the first person perspective. This is uh, behind the person, behind your avatar. This is facing your avatar. And this is the fl a flying camera, following camera, which is really cool. And you can change the zoom angle by using your mouse wheel in and out. And you can also move your mouse like I'm doing here, clicking and moving my mouse to move things around. And if you join the class, you can see in some of our classes I teach students, I talk about this and how that works exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now then and go into the negotiation campus. So we have the bus here, which is really neat. A little buffer area here. We can meet with students here, very simple design. Okay, I've entered the negotiation campus now, and what we have here are a number of buildings. I put a map here to try to make it a little bit easier for students to find their way. We have a dock area on the water, and that dock area leads to some islands, and those islands involve uh, RPG, which we're going to play later. Right now, you can see the basic campus design. Now, we have a building under construction, so not much to see there. The rest of the buildings are done. I'm going to fly up so you can look around here. So I'm up in the air. And you can see we have this nice glass building, which you can enter. We have a road going around. We have a auditorium inside this other building here with some glass. And hopefully someday we're going to build, build that out to detail. We also have a warehouse in case we want to do some business training for warehouse or factory kind of uh, simulations. And this gray building here was originally a nice tall glass building, but we found that once your design gets really complicated, especially with glass or reflections, uh, the server is very difficult to handle that load, even though we have a very powerful server. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter this main building, which we have under reconstruction, so it's all gray right now. If you push shift at the same time, your avatar will run. Uh, 
These are little recording boxes you can drop around for your students. I dropped them for testing, actually. So I think nothing should be here right now that's important. You just push okay, what we have here is the main hallway. And this is really neat. We can do a lot of different things here, lots of big spaces. This is easy for the server to render, so it's fairly speedy. It rarely uh, slows down the response rate. It's very little lag. Nice big room. You can see I can look up and down. And you can see the roof over there, a fountain in the middle, and some uh, windows going out to the side. So a uh, reception desk, etc. This is great to have students break up into groups and they can meet around in different places inside this room if you don't want to get too separated. One of the key points in this is it's easy to think that it's you know, no problem for students to find their way. But the virtual space, actually students are very easy to get lost. They just forget, not forget, it's just hard to find where you're going or where you're at. In Open Wonderland, you can simply go over to the user list, click on a user, and then click on, there's an icon here that says go to, and you can go to where another user is. However, students don't always know how to do that, or, and or they don't really know who to go to, because students could be all over the place. So having this hallway is nice because you can see everybody. Nice big area. It's easy for me to walk around and say, hey, come on over here. Everybody follow me. Very easy to get organized. Now back at the back of this hallway here, we have chapters from the book. So each one of these doors leads to a part of the book. And then inside there are the different sections of the book even. Each room is one small section of the book. I find breaking it up into very small details makes it a little bit easier for students to digest and follow. Again, you would think that having a nice realistic space is cool, students would have no trouble. However, I found that that's not true. They're very easily overwhelmed, frustrated, and get lost. So I like to begin in a nice big area like this and slowly work my way down to the different, different specific sections. So let's just go ahead then and go to the first chapter here. Let me give you a look. This in our book is called Part 1. So this exactly matches the book for this business negotiation class. So just walk into the door here. And it doesn't matter which part you go into, you end up in an area that looks exactly like this. A couple of escalators coming down, which is really neat looking. And then a round room and labeled above all of the doors. And each one of these rooms is one section of the part or the chapter. So in this case, we have like, for example, room one is vocabulary and phrases. Uh, room two is the introduction. Room three is the dialogue. Room four is the word practice, etc. Let me just walk over here to follow up, which kind of gives you more detail of that topic of the chapter. And I would tell my students, follow me, come on in here. So they follow me. And what we have are these very large room areas and these uh, monitors inside the room. And we can look up and we can look down, we can look left, we can look right. By holding down the control button, you can actually use your mouse to tilt your avatar's head up and down, up and down. And usually what I have are a number of monitors and students can use those to look. They usually more than one monitor, so there's a little bit of a repeat, so students can will be spread out all over the room. You have to remember you can't get too far away though. As you move away, your avatar's volume or voice will become less, will become smaller. So you need to kind of make sure you stay in the area of the students. Although these rooms are pretty small, they usually should be able to hear you inside here. So this is where we'll come in and I'll do some teaching. The students will follow me and hopefully not get lost. I find this to be a great way to approach the class in that we break it down into very specific parts. Now, of course, when we teach in a class, I think most teachers do that. However, in the virtual space, I represent the parts by specific rooms. So we end up getting down to a very specific room is one piece of one chapter or one part. And I've made it easy to move between the rooms. So for example, right now we're in room number five and then I want to go on to room number six, which are the exercises. So just walk through this door. And then here we have the exercises from the books. 
uh, students can come right up here. They can even fly up and come into the uh, display, which is really clear. The closer you get, I mean, it's really nice and clear, really nice. Sometimes I get all my students flying up here and getting really close to the monitor, which is pretty exciting stuff. When you're flying up in the air, your avatar cannot use gestures. You cannot wave or nod your head. It's just frozen like that. When you come back down to the ground, then you can go ahead and use gestures if you need to. Okay, so that's basically the way this campus works, or at least this building so far what I've done. Mm -hmm.